In this episode, we touched on some racket specs again. We discussed if players with two-handed backhands are more boring to watch. And our guest for the week gives us some insight into the pros and cons of tennis players who are not the most tallest on tour. Our guest for the week is Juan Carlos Aguila. He's a former Texas A&M alum and TCU alum. He's our good friend and we had lots of laughs in this episode. Enjoy. Today's episode is actually prepared all by Instagram. All of the questions that we have on today's episode is from you guys. So if the episode is is not good, is we're blaming you all. So um, the first over under is from Adam, and it says lead tape and racket customization versus playing with stock rackets. Do we think that's overrated or underrated? And I guess that's a good question to start you, Charlie, because you just switch rackets. Also, did you change specs too? Oh, actually, I kept the same ones, but I went to this guy. Um, remember you gave me this guy's number? I think I guess he was busy. Um, Dustin. Okay. He was busy. He was crazy busy because he was at the U.S. Open, and then I went to this guy, uh, uh Rick Macy, who helped me out with the new specs and stuff, because I was switching from a hundred to a ninety-eight, and it actually he was unbelievable. He did a great okay. job, and then the biggest change for me was going from a hundred to ninety-eight. Big, made a huge difference. Um, but then I think he, I, I'm, I'm not sure what he, what he did, but there's, there's definitely a good weight on my racket and especially in the head. And honestly, it's, it's been, it's been paying off so far. How so. does it play differently? The 198. It's the E zone, right? Yeah, it's the E zone. Uh, I was, I was switching rackets actually when I came back from, from injury, I was trying different ones and, uh, the hundred, the hundred just like has a lot of power, but doesn't have, doesn't have mm, lots of control. So then the, were, there were times where I, when, whenever I would get tired or whatever in matches, then I felt like I was guiding through the ball, you know, not hitting as much. And then it felt like I had too much power when sometimes I just needed to, to control the ball a little bit. So I think the 98, um, the 98 was a good change for me. And then this guy who customized my rackets, he told me right away, like, what are you doing playing with 100? Like, usually girls play with 100 and then guys need a little more control. So then I was like, shoot, like, I need to change. I need guys, to change. guys <laughs> shitting on yeah. you. Yeah, so he's shitting on my racket. He hit you with your, like, in your pride. Yeah, yeah exactly. So then, then I was like, I got to change right away. Change. Okay, okay. Um, so you think it's underrated, the... Uh, customizing rackets and stuff you think oh it's yeah very important i think it's massive i would i people who just play with rackets straight off the shelf i don't know if you guys do that but no. i think it's i i don't understand how they do it i i think you need some weight at least some sort of weight to make yeah to get a little more e- like easier power I think. I think it depends on your level like that's if, what that was one of the questions you asked it at what level does it actually matter yeah i think if you're a beginner and you're just like trying to find a way to put the racket or the strings to ball don't think about customizing your racket. But like if you are a competitive player, I think playing what would be a level I think you need to Maybe juniors? Like when you're playing ITFs and stuff already? I yeah. think that starts it starts to matter then. Yeah, At like least... if you're playing like ITF, so you're playing like like UTR tournaments and you wanna like win those events, I feel like most people at that level are starting to like tinker with, with the specs and try to like make the racket fit to their game a bit more. Bro, at the very minimum they should be the same racket. They should all be the same weight. At yeah. the minimum. At I least, agree. yeah, 100%. Because they're that. all different, especially if, if I think most of them come from China. Mm-hmm. I heard that Yonex is very good. Yeah, that's consistent. that's actually one of the biggest reasons why I switched. I, I I was told they're made in Japan. They're a little more consistent. But at the very least, just like you guys say, yeah, you need same. to get them all, all like in the same range, same, yeah. same weight. And I think once you're playing, playing, I think it's actually underrated because a racket, it can feel so different with a different balance point or with... Yeah, if you have weight more in the head, it plays way different than if you have weight all in the handle. Like I think you need to definitely dial in your dial in your spec. Whose phone is that? Mine. Okay. Bothering you? Or yeah, it's just there. Just on the car. <laughs> <laughs> it's just there. It's on the edge of the table. You, you want me to move? Can you move, please? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think it's definitely important. And like Jody said, at the very least, start start by getting all your rackets at the at the same spec. Yeah. Do you have anything to add there? No, I agree. I agree. I and think that- for me, it's probably I, the when I started taking that more seriously was probably when I got uh decent at juniors, like mm-hmm. so around fifteen, sixteen. 
and that's since then uh, I can't play with a normal racket. Yeah. I, I need my weight and especially with, with my size, obviously I need as much power as I, as I can get. So and I feel like the better you get, the more you feel the subtle differences. And I think that there may be some special cases out there like Darian, Darian King. Yeah. He can play with anything. <laughs> You you pass him a a, a pan of the kitchen where he play Wait, the, the same Virginia level. Wait, Virginia story, the Charlottesville story, and yeah, two thousand and sixteen, I think he would have been the one seed of this tournament at the time. Darian was switching rackets, or he didn't get rackets in time from Babolat, and they sent him the Dominic team Babolat. Yeah. At that time, he's using like the blue one. Before that, he was using the pure drive. He had no pure drives. He they sent him one Dominic team racket. He had one racket with him every day before the match. He strung the racket. And played matches the whole week nice. with the one, with the same racket. And he made finals. Yeah. And the first day he hit with it was like the Sunday before the. Yeah, I think he beat Alexander like Richard first round. No. Like, way. just every day string the racket and just. Players played that week. Like Tennis Sangren, I think, played that week. Yeah. Um, Seku played that week. Alex Kuznetsov, like good good players, and yeah. he's playing with one racket. That's nuts. No stress in the world, like. No, but he still does that. No, like. Remember, he, remember, to you, last year when we when he won, um, I think it was the that in New New York and then Pittsburgh when yeah. he beat me in the final. Uh -huh. He was playing with uh, Matthew's uh, racket. Yeah, yeah. And Espec 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 he showed up. Yeah, he showed up with two sticks. Yeah, yeah. so that's it. One of and them was in that room. It's yeah, not even his chopped rackets. everyone. <laughs> Unreal. I think in Dominican he pulled up with Prince rackets. He's played the first round with Prince rackets and and the rest of the with Babolat. I think he played some also with Tommy's um. Wilson, the yeah, the, the blades, the blades. But I don't think he liked them very much. But yeah. he just had them, yeah. But like, I think he, like you said, he's yeah. one of the few very people. Very few that guys can, can play with anything. Whatever. Yeah, that to because, me is crazy. But I think probably because he doesn't take that much risk. Like he's gonna put all the risk on the other side of the net. <laughs> so he, for him, it's just like I'm just gonna play like a safe ball, and I'm just not gonna miss. Yeah, but you, so I think smart. you, I think you're downplaying it because that you gave me your racket during a match the other week. Uh -huh. And I was trying to just make the ball, and I hit three balls to the fence. Yeah, yeah, but he doesn't switch in the middle of a match. But you know, he switches. Like but it's not easy. It's it's hard. Yeah. Like uh -huh. it's it's a completely different feel to other rackets, and you're like you have to know how much to give each ball, so it's not even a bad ball. Because he's not hitting bad balls either. Yeah, yeah. He's hitting the ball well enough that you can't really attack. Yeah. yeah. But I do I do think it it depends a lot on the player. Like if you give me a prestige, there's no way my ball is going past the yeah. service line. You no know chance. what I mean? Yeah. If I play with your yeah. racket, same. So I think, yeah, since he makes a lot of balls and he's just and like... just mentally, bro, playing with a new stick in a match for the first time, like you don't trust it in big moments, but he seems to be all right with it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. he's, a, he's a special case. Darian. He's different, I don't man. Know. He's thinking this is overrated for sure. Yeah, <laughs> it's, overrated. Dog, it's just a racket, bro. Strings on a racket. <laughs> you do whatever. But I think some of it, some of it might be ego, to be honest with you. Like, because I think he probably has some preferences in rackets. He just doesn't want to buy rackets anymore. So he's yeah. just going to... Oh, Eswick has a couple of rackets. That he's in 2016, saying, oh, the guy doesn't have a couple. The there guy was, was one year. There was one year that he was getting ready for Australian Open, and Bablat sent him the wrong rackets, and he went to Australian Open and used them. Why? Used the wrong rackets at, at the tournament. How, like, did, how did he do? I don't remember. I don't, I don't know. Remember. But yeah. But he was doing well at that time. He was like qualities of Australia. Australia yeah. So yeah. But, yeah. Okay. What's the next? What's one? about fresh grips during every match? Yeah. So Bro, for me, PK. PK Pranav Kumar, if yeah. you're watching, change your grips, bro. <laughs> Jesus, change your grips, dog. Bro, I don't, I don't get it. For me, before every match, I grip my rackets again. I need to have fresh feeling grips at the start of a match. But like, I was in Temuco last year, and I think it might have been second round. Kova went on the court, and he's playing with like, you know when they play the Wilson grips and they get dirty? Yeah. They look gray? Yeah, yeah. He's playing with a gray grip. And I'm like, dog, how are you at this high level and you're playing with all grips to start matches? I don't understand. I can't do it. My rackets have me, to be fresh. I use the toner grips and they tear. Like they, they'll literally tear up. And so I, but I, I change a grip. Every time I restring a racket, I just change a grip. And I, usually I use a if I'm, fresh racket. For, if I'm training, I don't care. I, yeah. I can play with an old grip. But for matches, every match has to have fresh grips. Like that, that just makes you feel like you're ready to play a match. If it's not fresh grips, you just, I feel like I'm, I feel unprepared. I don't feel ready. <laughs> I don't know. For me, it's honestly simple. If I uh, if I'm playing a match, if I'm playing a tournament, every single match, yeah, fresh grip. But in practice, I can literally play with anything you give me. Yeah, as well. long as I don't waste those, because obviously it's money. Uh -huh. uh, pay, paying for the Wilsons, uh, I can play with any. You give me Torna, you give me Yonex, anything, and it can be it can literally be gray and like can barely hold a racket. As <laughs> long as I don't have to black. pay for extra, then I'm good. Yeah, bro. I think no. For me, the Torna grip literally tears, and then you see in the um. The leather grip underneath. Like at that point, it's too much. Because then you're gonna get like blisters. Why are you a heavy sweater? 
In Florida, yeah, I do. But I, like, I've been trying to get Wilson white grips, but they're out of stock everywhere. Yeah, so. I, don't, I don't get the torn up people. For example, they're 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 done after like thirty yeah, minutes of flying. Exactly. That's yeah. why I have to change them. Get me like gas cable. Get, get your <laughs> changeover game good. Bro. Just <laughs> spin it up quick, <laughs> bro. Actually, I'm not a over under. The the pre match toilet. What do you mean? Is that over underrated? Like before I play a match, I have to go to the bathroom. Same. One or two? Y- usually both. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's, the, it's called uh, the pre-match, man. The I have to. Shit, man. <laughs> like, I have to, bro. <laughs> That's the nerves. <laughs> it's the nerves kick in. You don't yeah. feel the, the butterflies, huh, before you go on court? I, I do, but more is to, is to pee. But, but when I was young, bro, I'm no, playing I will say the orange ball under 12. Okay. <laughs> orange ball under 12. I can't remember the, the guy's name, bro. I want to say he played at Oklahoma. From Hungary, whatever. I'm playing this guy like second round under twelves, and I got a shit. But <laughs> I'm on now, and I'm nine years old, and I don't. I'm afraid that I'm gonna be late, so I don't. I go to the court. I lose one and oh. I can't move. I don't, and I don't know that I can take a break in the middle of the sets. I don't know anything. I'm just just fighting. But I, dog. So from then, it's always, bro, before the match, you have to go. do your thing. But I also, it's the, the nerves that kick in the before you play. The relief is unbelievable after, after one of those ones, bro, when you finish. It's unreal. But I think that that is an underrated part of the pre-match routine. Like, no, you I, can't skip that. Like, you go on the court, not sure if you need to. No, no, if you, you're not you sure you need to, you have to do it. But I, I, don't really, I don't really have that. I you feel know? like most players do, though. I, I, I yeah. try to go. Just, I have to pee. I have to pee. Just whatever. Just try it. Even if I don't Bro, feel like it, then I need I don't to. know if you remember. Like, it was... I don't even know if you were there. Probably you weren't there. But it was my first or second tournament back. No, first tournament back from injury. Yeah. It was in Colombia. And uh, I hydrated like no other. And I took... At the time, I was taking like... What was the thing that we were taking in Texas? Like a pre-workout tablet or the something. C4? You know? No, no, oh, no. It was the, the beta... The beta... Annaline, whatever it makes you tingle. Things. It's like yes. yeah, yeah. So, so I'm playing. I'm, I'm about to play. I'm next on. Yeah. And the guy's serving for it, setting a break. Yeah. And I'm hydrating like a joke. And I already pee twice in the second <laughs> set because I'm I'm so ready. I haven't played in like eight months, right? Yeah. Beta alanine. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. And then, so I took the thing and I already peed twice in the second set. The guy chokes. They go to a third and they end up going seven, six in the third. I think I peed five more times no before way. I played. Yeah, so nervous. I ended up getting killed. I played Hoyos. Oh, yes. Yeah, Hoyos. I got killed by Hoyos in altitude in Bogota. Like, yeah. Nervous, bro. <laughs> nervous. You gotta go to the Bro, are you popping the hydration tabs in Bogota altitude? Bear, bear, no, no, it's bear. not hydration. It was like a pre workout thing. Oh, okay. It was like, yeah. But then, oh, so that was another thing. So I took it at. Like five three in the second. Yeah, they went to seven six in the third. <laughs> so I'm buzzing. <laughs> I wanna have before we play. I'm for sure crashing by the time we play. So stay up the PEDs, bro. Yeah. Um, okay. So first topic of the day from Kian. He has a claim that if a tennis player's best shot is their two handed backhand, they're normally not that fun to watch. There's a couple exceptions. And his reasoning. His reasoning too. I thought. Wasn't whatever he said. So basically, a forehand is so much more versatile and generally can produce more power for most players. You can put variation on the shot and dictate with it. Most one-handed players have a lot of flair and nice touch, such as Shapo, Musetti. So most people love watching them. When you think of two-hand players, they're normally really solid and tough to hit through. Not that fun to watch. And he said peak Karatsa was was an exception, which I don't know. Karatsa was bombing hundred backhand winners. Karatsa was just hitting. Crazy winners from any anything you hit, but especially at the forehand line, I felt like yeah. it was crazy. Yeah, but I think it's a bad take. Like bad take from Kim. I think it's a bad take from you. Like, okay, <laughs> there are those players who are just solid and they make a lot of balls and they're hard to to play through. But if you think about the guys with better backhands right now, right? Even like right now today, Tiafo, I think he's fun to watch. Yeah, exactly. Tommy Paul, I would say he's fun to watch. You think Tiafo's backhand is be- so? What makes a backhand better than a forehand? Like I would. I would say if there's a side going to break down on Tiago, it's a forehand. 100%. Yeah, yeah. But also if there's a side that's going to hurt someone, it's also the forehand, no? But also it takes so much time from the backhand. Like, backhand return is a joke. Takes the backhand early. Like, I don't know. I wrote a list of a few players. Actually, that's what I wanted to ask you. Sorry, go on. I didn't mean to, finish, to cut you off. Or like, you can go wild card, like Benoit Pair. Crazy sick backhand. Yeah, he said exceptions. Terrible. Yeah, yeah. Bro, I exceptions. actually, I actually played Ben Upper last year. At the uh-huh. end of the year, it was crazy. Guys like running around his forehand to hit backhands, yeah. and it's unbelievable. And he was honestly like 
he was fun to play against because he was always hitting hot uh, shots. Yeah. He'll tank here and there, and then <laughs> it's just it, Did it's you win? so funny. I lost. I lost six four six three. He was actually playing Unreal, but um, but his back end was Unreal. Like so much fun to play. Yeah, and he's he's fun to watch. I would say no. Yeah, I would say, 100%. but he. I think he would be. In my opinion, what I think Kian is saying is the exceptions are guys who's gonna like, crack backhands like like him. Yeah. Like, he will absolutely just murder a backhand. Like what? How would you classify Medvedev? So I wrote I wrote down Zverev, Djokovic, Medvedev, Tommy, and Demonor. Maybe not Demonor, but the other. Well, him too, I guess. But like, I just I'm curious about what makes a backhand better than a forehand. Cause like, bro, Djokovic's backhand you can argue is like one of the best of all time. But is it better than his forehand? Like, his I forehand think early on it was. Better. I think now his forehand is better than his backhand. But when he was coming up, he was still a sick player to watch. But his backhand was better than his forehand. The forehand was like a, it looked a little crazy. It was like a shakier side than so the backhand. So he's an exception as well. That's another no. exception. But I just think it's a bad take, bro. Look, <laughs> David, David Nabandian, backhand unreal. Yeah. Sick player to watch. Guillermo Coria, forehand was bad. Backhand unreal, sick touch. Yeah. Marat Safin, forehand was very good, but the backhand was the money shot. Like the, you see when you do the jumping backhand thing? Yeah. Unreal player. Layden Hewitt, sick backhand. Andy, Andy Murray, yeah. sick backhand. <laughs> Backhand unreal on a string. He puts the love, angle, whatever you want with the backhand. King I think that's a horrible take. He's been thinking Run, about the, this all day. No, I think it's a horrible take, bro. Like, <laughs> really bad take. I think, I think, I think that I might agree. I like to watch players with good forehands more than people with good backhands, probably. Like, back in the day, like, Fernando Gonzalez, you had Federer, you had, I mean, the list goes on, Del Potro, whoever you want to name. It's sick but, to watch. Yeah. But there are so many guys with sick backhands that are fun to watch. I no, think that I, that's I, a bad take. I think it's a terrible take. Kane Shikori jumping in the air like this in bro, his prime, bro. What are you talking about? Bad, bad. Alcaraz back in Loki is unbelievable, yeah, I think. Nasty, yeah. I, I can't remember who was talking about <laughs> it, but someone was saying that his back end was actually better than his forehand. Right. I think it was in a, one of the top players, and his, he can do anything with his back end. He can go line, he can go cross. I think he'll get yeah his forehand's like a little more shinier but and the, but then he'll go and make on it breaks down mistakes. more than the yeah. than the backhand and then for usually sure. usually like when I pl when I try to play the, when I play guys like that I always try to go for the forehand even if it's even if their forehand's better you know they're gonna hit big, bigger shots yeah. I feel like they're gonna give me more on the forehand more I don't know if you guys agree compared yeah, to like sure. they're they're not really gonna miss that much on the back end you know they're always gonna mm -hmm. get that ball back go cross. Yeah. Oh, and Boris Kozlov too. I just played him. Uh, his back end is. I don't know if you guys have ever seen him, no. but it's the dirtiest thing. Boris Kozlov's back end is unbelievable. His back end is unbelievable. His forehand is a little shaky, but he's he's so tough to like. I beat him three and two, but he's actually so tough to play against because he's literally like running around, hitting back ends, uh -huh. like hitting back ends. He's he'll be like by the fence and he'll back he'll hit a back end line right on the line. It's unbelievable. Guys I'm like that, they're tricky. And honestly, sometimes, even what he's saying, like with the guys who don't do as much, sometimes they're fun to watch as well. Yeah. Cause, I don't know. Like for like, me, like watch never they play, just, like, it's like and it's sick. they have to like build a build yeah. a point, you know? So you end up watching like instead of like serving first ball, you're watching like four, five, six balls and they're like moving. Like, and maybe it's because we play tennis, maybe we admire it more, but it's like it's admirable when you see that guy who can just like dig in and then he has the open stance sliding back and he can put it back deep all the time. Bro, like you know, Taylor Fritz when he you know, played backhand cross, it's a joke. You know, Chilek was teaching me that one in, in France. The sliding on the left leg? Yeah. Chilek's back is a joke. It is disgusting, bro. Yeah, that's a terrible thing. It's the, the little shovel. It's, it's yeah. just if you have it, man. I mean, I don't know. You you have a one hander. What do you, what do you think? Like, would you rather like sometimes have a two hander or what? Do you I think that the the players who have the the extreme difference in shot are hard to play. Like I played, I watched like Nori play in college. Yeah, backhand comes high off the ground. Forehand is up here. <laughs> I played against Jack Draper like years ago. But the same thing. Backhand flat. Yeah. Forehand heavy. Yeah. Like. When you have to deal with this, it's like yeah, it super uncomfortable. Fun. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, I don't know, bro. I just think it's a bad take. And I, I think that... I don't think that which side you have makes you more or less entertaining. I just think it's how you... I just think it's the, your personality tennis player that makes yeah. you fun to watch or not. I don't care if it's the backhand or the forehand. It's like, I appreciate anyone's special thing that they do. Yeah. And you kind of look... You look for... You look for You're watching a money and play, you're looking for the... For the sick opening in the backhand line or whatever it is, yeah. you know? I think that it's just tennis can be beautiful and no matter how you play, two hands, one hand. It doesn't matter how you play it, yeah. but yeah, what you end up it's the character you have as a player is what, what makes the match. Yeah, you know? the I end think. product, yeah. I have a question for you also about backhand. So in dubs, which side do you prefer to play? Uh, 
what but what's the reason why uh the reason why is i think i return a little better my back and return cross stays tied to the net okay. so it's easier for me to like get through the volley um and then i i think i can also it's a little easier for me to just redirect the line okay on the on the due side i remember we we used to play there yeah, yeah, i struggle switched. a little more on the uh with a forehand because i can't really go cross as much so compared to this when i'm on the yacht side and i'm returning i can just kind of like yeah. push it what about your backhand cross I think I can just, I'm good at like taking it like right in front and uh -huh. like leaning towards it. So then I'm always able to like, I catch it a little earlier and then I feel like I'm able to find that angle okay. like in the doubles alley. And then it makes it really hard, I think, for guys serving and balling especially. I'm asking because I'm kind of going to shit on Clem a little bit. Like Chidek again. I played two weeks with him yeah. and he played ad side. Yeah. And he told me like, he thinks that his backhand cross is easy to poach on. So he he thought that he so if, for those of you who haven't watched him play his backhand like almost like side spin yeah. he hits it so tight to the net and like flat and hard to the court and he wanted me to try and be as proactive as possible and like move like cover the middle which yeah. is you, what you should do as a double player but like aggressive because he felt like if he hits too many backhands cross yeah. he thinks that the, the, their net person is gonna poach his you know and I thought the opposite like I I thought like your backhand is a joke yeah. and no one's gonna want to deal with like a ball coming below, like what Justin was saying, uh, like below the knees every time, they're going to try to redirect. They're going to try to change. I agree you know? with you. Because what yeah. do you, if you're, if you're poaching, so you're poaching to the left, right? What are you going to, the, the easiest shot is either you go middle, try to finish it, but that, if that ball's low, yeah. then how do you, like, how do you hit the middle? Yo, Clem, grab your notebook. <laughs> <laughs> and then, <laughs> should that get the, the five minute journal out. Yeah, and yeah. <laughs> take some notes. He actually has a, <laughs> He actually has a perfect shot though. To do exactly. That. Yeah, it's so hard. I, there's nothing I hate more when I'm poaching when yeah. a guy's when a guy it's plays like tight to the net. Because yeah. then if I try to go short to like with a like the little dropper, that yeah. ball is like so low and with so much pace, it's hard to. Yeah, yeah exactly. it pops up sometimes. Because I was thinking like after after we played two weeks, we didn't we didn't do very well. Like we we lost first round both weeks. But then I was thinking like trip, no? emotion. Yeah, no, I lost first round the week after as well. <laughs> but I was thinking like emotionally for him. I don't agree with the decision, but I think maybe emotionally for him, he should play do side because he feels like he can dip his forehand more. Like he feels like if people pressure him, he can like roll one like middle short or cross line or lob. I disagree big time. I man. disagree too, but I think from an emotional side for him. But I think that if he is on the ad side, he's going to be like a problem. The man returns so well and he just pings back and like sideways. I no, think book, no book, no book, no book. Write it down, no bro. Book. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. No, I think in a way he actually he he his returning style is kind of similar to me, like yeah. better back end for and just push it, you know, to yeah. the to the alley. Uh, I I just I think it's so hard because if if he just wants to go line last last second, he can he can yeah, do that as exactly, well. Exactly, exactly. Bro, over know. under. This is for the for the short kings out there being tall in tennis. Like, what is the <laughs> Why are you doing this? what is the <laughs> <laughs> what are the hidden the hidden advantages of being uh, a shorter man on the on the court. Move with if, a joke. If you, if you can think You're of it. You're for the short kings, but I, I don't see that many that many Carlos is out there. Bro. I feel like every time this is for you, bro. I feel like every time I'm playing someone, he's like so tall. I, I, sh I have to be. I'm trying to think of other guys that are short like me on tour. Can you think of anyone? No, but all of the guys who are like short by like, I guess what people think is normal, they all move a joke. Like that's one of the pros to being short: the movement, footwork. I think, yeah. I mean, Name I, one poor mover that's short. Schwarzman. Guy moves a joke. Who else we got? Andre Illigan. How tall is, is, tall is Illigan? I've never oh, seen yeah. him in person. Yeah, he's pretty short. I've never seen Quite him in nice really person. We've been tall. arguing about how tall he is, actually. Is he like under 5'10? Yeah. For sure. Yeah, yeah, For yeah. Sure. yeah he's a little Zeke man. Clark. He's about around my height. Zeke. Moves a joke. Horvy. Plays dubs, but moves a joke. Bro, when I was younger, there's always this stigma like the short guys are pushers or whatever. Yeah. But anytime I've played a short person, they take the ball so early and they play fast. <laughs> well, at times. I mean, I've, I've seen times when Zeke, when Zeke is not playing as well, I feel like he's playing defensive. defensive yeah. But yeah. when the short guys are playing well, I feel like they have great timing and they take the ball early and it's like a high tempo match. So Probably to be good, they have to be really good at certain things. Well, is, it, is it something that you had to be conscious of when you were young? Like, I need to start taking the ball early or I'm going to be, the course gets too big or yeah. what is it? Well, so I was actually, I always had, I guess, like a little, 
conflict of how, the way I should be playing. Well, should I grind? Should I take the ball early? I think I have like good skills to take the ball early. But then a coach in Argentina told me this. He told me earlier this last year, I think. The moment you start running, like me and in, in general, like any any short kings out there, the moment you start running, <laughs> I have to. Cover any princes out there? <laughs> yeah. Stop! 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 <laughs> I have to. I have to cover twice as much, uh, Run. like compared to a Jody or you, you know. Mm -hmm. So then the moment I start running, I'm I'm in trouble. Yeah. So I got to be the one dictating, which in a way con contradicts itself because I'm I'm the one smaller, right? So I guess I have less power, but I need to find a way to like dictate not in a way where i'm trying to like overpower you but just take take taking time away from you and like cutting the angles mm -hmm. and then make make you run because if i'm running then i'm I, i'm not i'm not gonna have the advantage covering the court mm -hmm. so i think that's that's huge and obviously naturally we'll like we'll be faster and our footwork will be will be better but um if you have if i had to choose obviously I i'd take be, serving serving big bombs like, be, like this guy nice, but huh? what's about your serving spots though like, does that change your serving spots like so for, like for me maybe Like, I don't care to drop bombs. What do you like, mean? You just, you just go big on everything. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's <laughs> yeah I don't care to, like, <laughs> open the court out wide on deuce or kick on, on out. Or actually, I like my flat wide on out yeah, as well. That, or, yeah. like... I can't relate to any of those. Yeah, so, so that's what I'm saying. Like, what... what <laughs> Slide it. I, I have no idea what Massage you're talking about right now. All, all, every, every ball around. Everything for me around. is brush, brush, brush. <laughs> Everywhere I go, man. I'm just, bro. I'm not even thinking about hitting an ace. I'm just going. <laughs> what is an ace, bro? What is an ace, man? Okay, so that's my question to you is what's your mentality in the service games? Like, do you, are you thinking about the serve for the ball you're going to get? The first ball? Are you, what, how? <laughs> my, my mentality Co com please, Combination, you thinking? <laughs> please hold, man. That's all I'm asking. I just want to hold, bro. That got to be tough, though. Like, nice going to serve a setup 5-4, you just broke it for all. Yeah. And knowing you're gonna you're gonna play rallies. I know I'm gonna play every single. I know I'm gonna play most of the points. Yeah. Uh, like <laughs> on a serious <laughs> note, like I, I gotta. I just gotta find a way. For me, it's like opening up the court. So like yeah, yeah, so I'm, I'm awesome. gonna use a lot of of br brushing, brushing. <laughs> on the right. <laughs> brushing. brushing and then the percentage. For me, it's huge. Yeah, I, uh, for sure. Yeah. You go too long. Yeah, I'm working with a coach now that is really helping me with the serve, getting better. But especially like the the number one thing for us right now is is percentage. And I don't. I know I'm not gonna get any free points, so I'm trying to go body a lot or opening up the court on the deuce side or maybe a little kicker on the ad side, and then create the space for then that second ball. That's where I'm gonna try to take advantage yeah. of what we were talking about, taking the time, taking taking time away from my opponent, taking that ball early. And for me, in my particular case, I actually like coming in and finishing points at the net. So I think that's that's where I. You play with the extended racket. I switched. That's an I used to though. Guy doesn't listen My, no, or did you not say it in the beginning of the episode? No, no, no. You didn't I didn't say, say it, it actually. Oh, okay, that's okay. that's a very good uh, Shut up. He's <laughs> been, he's been, <laughs> Where's your notebook? <laughs> I'm sorry. So I used to, yeah, I was playing with extended pretty much my whole life. Okay. And then Bro, was, you did say it. The, the customizer guy said. 98. I said for, for, from the 100 to a 98. Oh, okay. I didn't say extended Once or again. anything. My bad. Yeah. So, oh, so I was actually. I <laughs> anyway. See, anyway, me, <laughs> as I, can, I was saying. If I can just continue. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I went back to the normal one, man. And for me, one of the things, yes, I did feel like maybe it was helping me a tiny bit for my serve, but I did feel like I, lo I lost a little touch at the net. Because you know, like you have that half a. Uh, half an inch or mm -hmm. whatever i don't know how, how much it is hey what's up guys sorry for interrupting the episode it would mean a lot to us if you could subscribe to the channel that's the best way to support us and help us to continue to make fun episodes with cool guests thanks so much and enjoy the rest of the episode but for the ball is you know like especially the ones that come right like close to your body then mm -hmm. i did feel like it made a difference to have like the normal the normal version so for me the guy that likes to come in here and there mm -hmm. and like finish points at the net i I, th i thought i was getting more from the normal rackets with with the volleys than that extra le uh, length uh, for the serves yeah interesting it's probably tougher with a longer racket to control forehands i'm guessing no yeah. like to whip like whip the racket exactly no no you, uh, the 98 and the normal for me it's So basically, your switch was just to get more accuracy with everything that you're doing. Exactly. And you have a little more freedom to swing. You don't exactly. Feel... And, th and those tight moments where you actually, like, maybe you're, you want to tight, uh, you, you're a little tighter and then you want to just guide. For me, now it feels like I can actually, even though I'm tight, it, it feels swing like up. I can actually swing. Yeah. And I'd rather, if I'm going to lose or if I get tight, I'd rather, like, lose swinging. So I think it, it was big. And then 
I, I think I've been doing much better ever since I made the switch. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, you finaled 25 recently, no? I finaled last week at 25. Well done, well done. Yes, sir. Somehow, every time I, I get on the pod, I, la- la- that last time I was in the final. Yeah, too. you did well. What was it? Final to Darren last time. Yeah, Darren. Yeah. Keep it with, with a different Where was that in Oklahoma? This was in Oklahoma last week, man. It was, it was, it was not easy. It was, it was tough. Hey, guys, quick break. Justin here from The Changeover. I'm going to talk about Pro Stringer. It's a great machine that I use, Jody uses, and a lot of other pros use as well. You can use it at home, on the road, really anywhere there's a tabletop surface. It takes me about 25, 30 minutes to string a racket on this machine. It is easy to travel with, fits in carry-on, suitcase, tennis bag, no issues at TSA. It's a big money saver, and you can save even more when you use our code CHANGEOVER to get $100 off the machine. Back to the episode. I want to know about this tournament in Oklahoma. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, what? don't. Crazy match against Rival, no? Seven, Crazy. Six. What was the yeah. rounds? Who you beat first round? So I beat Samir Banerjee. First round, okay. I think he goes to Stanford. Good, yeah, good, he's player, good player. Very aggressive. <laughs> Second round, I got Rival. A uh, little TCU uh, battle right there. Score? 7-6, uh, 2-6, seven, 7-6. Six, six, seven, six. Six. Absolute battle. Let's Tie break? About- uh, I think first one was three. seven three, and the second one seven five. And I, I actually, I finished, did you serve out the last one, dude? I went to T serve and volley, crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but to the back end, he was he, back, he was yeah, with two. Yeah, he's he's hitting the two. Yeah, the two hander. We actually, we, no, no. we I text the group chat maybe three times now separate. I say, well, why is Rival's back end return? But never but, mind. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta, just I, I, just I, start doing it two months ago. I played I played doubles with Jody and I I can confirm that. <laughs> I can't. No no no, there's been an increase, so don't worry. Uh, so you serve T? Stage, so I went T. High percentage, like big High or just sh- nah, of course, brush. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I go brush, but slider that kind of like goes away from you. Curl. Little JJ curl. Wolf. Yeah. JJ Wolf. <laughs> and then uh, and then I served in V. And then the uh, high volley. So he went. Back he he went inside out. He yeah. went. He popped it up. Yeah, yeah. He, so he popped it up. A little late. But I will say that he doesn't hit them. He but he gets them like poke, kind of high and deep. Ah, so you know? so I was yeah. And I've been short king's gotta be smart yeah, on them. I, I, gotta, I gotta use my brain, man. But I have been I have been practicing with him a few times, and okay. I kind of knew. Always, he's very good at it. It's been yeah. two months, but I knew he. I served and volleyed a lot actually against him to his back end because I know. Whenever he, whenever I put a little pace on it, then he would just have to block it, right? Mm-hmm. Like most of us do with with a two hander. But then whenever I would just go for a slider with take not, pace off. yeah, take the pace off. And then when he had to generate, most mm-hmm. of the time that ball would go high. So then I could come in or do a little more. I damage. think with the switch, like he because he's so new to it, he probably just redirects it very well. But like in terms of like actually putting pace on himself, yeah, that's probably a little tough one. Easy, yeah. Yeah. So I I think he'll he'll be better. He'll he'll definitely. Be better at it, and he's playing good, man. But uh, so Rabo second round, Rabo second round. I got Quinn Vanden Castile, very good player. Quarters, man, he hits huge. I lost six all the first set, actually. I was I was done because I couldn't hold, obviously. So then at that point, I'm obviously, like, <laughs> <laughs> just normal, man. normal day at the office for me. Indoors, the too. most shocking stat is no breaks. That's yeah, the most shocking yeah, exactly. stat. Okay. So a normal day at the office for me, and then somehow I, I I started playing a little better. I found the returns, and then found the holds too, which was big. And then I I win another absolute tiebreaker bot because I win a second that the second set I win a tiebreak seven five, and then the weirdest weirdest match because then I go up five love in the third in ten minutes, and then all of a sudden I'm like, what's going on here? I'm like panicking. I get tied. I'm like. I'm holding, like, what's going on? <laughs> and then I get broken, man, two times. He gets back to 5-4 serving. And then uh, somehow I win at 6-4. But, yeah, very good And player. then you break to, to win. And break. Obviously. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> For me, it's the break. I'm I'm not holding to, to win the match. I'm actually breaking to win the match. <laughs> that's, that's a step for me. <laughs> I want to I want to make sure I put myself in the position. Break, break. percentage is unreal. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah, semis against um, who did I play in semis? Oh, I played Tyler, Tyler Zink, who's actually been playing Bro, pretty he's good. He's been man. playing well. You saw him in uh, he's Kentucky, He's been playing right? well. Yeah. The he's playing well. But I just I found it strange a little bit how he's a very good player, but indoors we were playing indoors, and he was just really like <laughs> he was back like really like grinding, hitting a good ball. But I feel like I had a lot of time. And especially indoors, if I cut the if I if I cut the angles and I take time away, 
then I, I, I felt very comfortable and I did play very well. So uh got the win there and then and who chopped, I, you, chopped you in the final who and then it? i got chopped <laughs> in the final, bro, all i see is green picks <laughs> again with monday the man has beat evan zoo oh Domenko, johannes monday he's a chopra. problem right now listen to this, listen to this. evan domenko chopra McHugh, zinc dickerson magadan johns kim parulek pulling travis vida domenko again dostanich and aguila the is, man it, is, is, is this a win streak a 15 is, in a row. Is that a win that, streak? Let's not talk about the score in the final, please. It was 6 1, 6 3. Thank you. <laughs> oh, also, we have a last minute question for you coming in. Um, what happened at 8 all in the tiebreak in doubles in Edmonton? 8 all in the tiebreak in Edmonton. Oh my God. 8 all? I don't think it was 8 all in the third set, but. Okay. Uh, who, who asked the question? Uh, Amy. Are we allowed to say that? Amy Zoo. Evan's sister. Evan's sister. Oh! Okay, I know what she's talking about. Okay. Uh, when we were playing, no, I it wasn't eight all. I think it was like thirteen all, bro. The, I played the craziest doubles match I've ever played in my life. He's um, very imaginative. He's just adding numbers was, up. Yeah, yeah. Just <laughs> let him, let him go, let him cook. Yeah. <laughs> no, but we actually we won fifteen thirteen. Okay. And then we we're playing Willard and a, and a friend of mine, Mwamba Nikes. I think you guys know him. And then it's this crazy match. Like they've had four match points in the in the in the tie break. We had one. And it's 13 all. And then I can't believe if it's Wallard or or, or Muamba who hits a volley like inside the like inside the line, like doubles line. Uh -huh. Like here. I'm not it's not even close. I turn around and then I'm ready. Obviously, I'm serving to, to, to <laughs> we're, we're in big trouble. I'm, I'm I'm serving to save the match, 13, 14 down. And I'm like, let's just get over this. And then my my partner Boulet looks at me, he's like, Charlie, the ref just called it out. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like that ball, like didn't even get close to the line. And then uh, he goes, yeah, my, the the umpire called it out, just like, and then and then the guys that the guys didn't understand what was going on. They were just getting ready to return. They thought it was match point for them, which was correct. It was, yeah. It was. And then at this point, uh, we're doing, we're doing what I think everyone else does, which at the end of the day we're playing with the calls and we're excuse it, excuse it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. No, justify, justify. It it's not about you right now. We're justify up, it. We're up. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I'm never. I don't know. It's, it's, never, I mean, just, never. <laughs> what do you mean, never? <laughs> you just put me in the spot. But I, I did feel very bad about it because I was not that bad about Mamba. it. <laughs> not bad enough. <laughs> And the case is gonna watch this too. That's the, the thing. Case. The case is gonna watch. The case, if you're watching this, I'm sorry. <laughs> Not that sorry. No. <laughs> and uh, if it was you, you, you do the same thing, no, right? We're <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're. I I felt so awkward because it was Nick, I was playing the case. I believe too. that one. But yeah. then I'm. Not, I don't mean to expose my 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 friend. I don't know if he's gonna watch or not. But he was like pretty like set forward on like no, we're like we're taking it, which. Like now, like if you look into oh, it, oh, it wasn't you. It was your friend who decided. <laughs> we're just gonna, uh, we're just gonna say that. Yeah. They're just staring it up, huh? Yeah. And who's uh, your partner? I'm not gonna. I'm with not the gonna bus is touched. Wait, wait, was it Justin Boulay? Would that oh, have been it? Oh, Ohio yeah. State. Yes, yes, yes. But anyways, he did. He did <laughs> is that who it could have been? <laughs> okay, Justin? that makes he sense. He did say he was okay with me blaming it on him. Anyway, so okay. um, good guy. Anyways, the the ref is. I can't believe what the ref calls, but yeah, he they, he gives us a point, and it was it was the craziest thing. Like they had to call the supervisor. Mm -hmm. We stopped for like about ten minutes. They were first. They were sticking to the call first. So then I was getting ready to serve fourteen thirteen absolute bomb T. You know, ace <laughs> be done with the match, ace. and then somehow, which was obviously the accurate call, <clears throat> uh, they turn her around, and then they were gonna take the point. But then there was a little argument again about the ref, like um, not calling it at the time, but just telling us that it was out so then we said that he my partner said that to the supervisor and then they gave us the point again and then we he ultimately wanted to replay this was like 15 minutes we had a lot of people watching actually which was funny because like define no, a lot <laughs> yeah like define it like um 12 of, like 12 <laughs> no, okay. no like 30 like 30 people okay, that's okay. that's big time that's for yeah yeah yeah, yeah and um no, no one had a clue what was going on, and at this point, I'm like, I, I, I feel so awkward about yeah. the whole thing, cause especially if we end up winning, and then which 
we actually end up losing the point, which so it was like a so complete. So you replayed thirteen all. No, we didn't. They they oh, got they the point, got which the point. was the right thing. Yeah. Just the ref messed up big time, and then. I I'm I'm an advocate for fair play, but also like I I think <laughs> I think we're all playing. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, and and I'm okay with this. I think we're all playing for money, points, and whatever, and we're not making the calls. So whenever I play, friends, so money over morals. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I agree with him. I'm bro. just giving him a hard time. Uh, I, I agree with him. You know? No, no, I was playing two weeks ago in. Uh, <laughs> I was playing in Sioux Falls. We're up a set, and it's one all deuce. Yeah. And Simon Walker hits it cross court forehand yeah. inside the line, and they call it out. And I like we just start walking to the to the chair. You know, yeah. I mean, it was it was the game was done anyway. But like, they're freaking out, and Hans looks at me and he says like. Was in or out? I was like, yeah, it was in. But like, what do you want me to do yeah, now? Exactly. You know, like, cause, cause, I give this call, but then what, but happens, what happens later yeah, on if they don't give me a, a call? And what happens in a tight moment in the second set where you don't know how that other person's gonna no, react? Playing. I've been there, like, I've been the guy who gives calls, lose matches, be pissed. The guy didn't give me calls back. Yeah. yeah so exactly. now we just play whatever the ref says. So I think yeah. it's always better, especially if you're playing friends, if you don't want anything like any. Yeah. Sort and I of... hate being in that position too because I'm also human. So like. What if we give each other a call here, then then it gets down to five all deuce or yeah. something or twelve all in the tie break, <laughs> and sure. now I know that I'm a man that hit you with this one. I don't know, yeah. man. I wasn't sure. I'm so sure, yeah. you know. I'd be like, I don't know. I wasn't sure. Like it was close. So yeah, what do you want me to do? No, I agree though, but <laughs> it's it's more do? fun to call you with Cheetah. That's more fun. <laughs> yeah, I guess. You know? I guess. Uh, and for, <laughs> for the views, do it for the views. For the viewers, that, that ball was in. There's no doubt. <laughs> Uh, just in case there's any video, of, uh, video <laughs> and I think the craziest thing actually is I end up serving at 13 14 like okay. Boulay actually has a m really good serve me I'm, I'm just me mm. I'm just gonna slice that body <laughs> and, and pray for my partner to get an easy volley or opponent to shank or, or shank yeah <laughs> And then we, we win the craziest point, 14 all. Then I go big T and my Now you're feeling it. And now I'm feeling Now, now you're 12 o'clock on the ball. Now I'm feeling myself. And then I go big T, uh, opponent misses a return. And yeah, we, we won 16 14, but crazy match. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Cheater. All right. <laughs> um, so one more topic, because we also, actually, we have so many topics, but we're not going to be able to cover all today. So let's go. With the last one is from also Chidek again. It's a not talked about enough stat, in his opinion. So he said, instead of break points saved, what about holes after saving break points? So, for example, if you're serving <laughs> love 40 and you save three break points and get broken, it's going to say you save three or four break points. But what about if you hold, then it's just going to show a hole? Because then he thinks that over the course of a match, it doesn't paint an accurate picture of the match because I can struggle all day on my serve and still hold, get in zero service games except for one, sneak a break, and then... That's not what the stats going to show. So what do we think? I guess that? maybe you need both then because you can paint the opposite picture the other way. If I only show I held, maybe if I only show I got broken, like let's say it says 0 for 1, like I got a break point and I got broken. But what if I was um, for the whole match, I was holding sort of easy, 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 easy. And just I just see that one game is the only thing that's important. You know what I mean? I feel like it doesn't paint the full picture of the, I guess, the serving match. So I feel like both are probably good stats to have, but I think that they both have their own context. Personally, I don't, I don't know how to feel about that actually, because for me, I just, <laughs> I just I look at exposed. serve, serve. I just want a high percentage. I don't care if I, I know I'm gonna get broken, but the way I look at in, into it is, I know I'm gonna get broken, so I want to try to get as much as many chances. When I'm returning, that, that, that I know I'm gonna get I broken. Know, know. <laughs> so the day have you ever played a match and not got broken? In the the match? day he beat, yeah, I have. Yeah. I feel unbelievable. By the way, when that happened, <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that also makes me feel bad about the other person. Like, how did you not break my server? Bro, bro, the day you beat Boulay, love and love. Oh shit! How was that for a day? Like that, huh? Yeah. Once again, Boulay getting his toes on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, it felt. I don't know, because he's actually a really good guy, so I generally feel bad about it, but I, I, I played well, and... You feel bad a lot, huh? Yeah. That's your thing. Yeah. He has a big heart, this guy. Big, especially big heart. especially, yeah. especially hey. when it goes his way, he feels big bad. <laughs> hey, little man, big heart, you know? <laughs> no, man, when, when I hold, when I hold, like, even if I get broke, broken, like, once or twice, it feels unbelievable. But it just, it just feels, to me, when I, when I hold, 
it's mostly a uh, because uh fo- a focus thing. I actually I think when I when I don't, when I don't really get broken because for me I think holes it's it's purely focus. It's not about me serving as well as much, but mm-hmm. actually the focus, uh, hitting my spots and thinking about what I'm gonna do in the next ball. Um, so then if I if I'm able to win a match and I'm I'm holding, it's I'm proud of the fact that I was really concentrated and like, locked focused, in. Like, locked in during the match. More than oh okay I I served unbelievable you know so I think you have just more extreme like if you lose focus bad things will happen versus like other people can lose focus and maybe get away save with the it. game easier. like maybe if I lose focus for a point or two while holding serve maybe I can get away with hitting some bombs or something yeah 100%. because versus, like for for you you feel like it's extreme if you lose focus you're in trouble yeah. like like Fernley was talking about he felt like at the highest level the big points for him were like if he got a low fifteen look on someone's service game like if he was up low fifteen that felt like a break point. He felt like he had to get ahead a few. Yeah. Especially against big service. Especially against big service. Because if they could like get to 30 all, he felt like yeah. they were going to hold because yeah. they, they serve so well. So you feel like you need to be super locked in on those, like, I guess, many advantages in the game. Yeah, I feel like I need to be locked in 100% to get those advantages and to be able to break. And obviously, I haven't played as many matches as at the highest level like Jake. But two years ago, I played Arthur Rindernetch and... I got a wild card Wait, in, in Montreal this? Masters. Montreal, that's right. I got a wild card and what like what are the odds? I end up playing him and he serves huge. That I think that year he had probably one of the best stats, the best serving stats mm-hmm. on tour. For those of you who don't know, they were teammates at AM. We were teammates at AM and it was a crazy battle. And what he made me feel exactly it's 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 what you were saying right there, what Jake was telling you. I felt like I really need to get up fifteen forty or love forty or like love thirty, get those advantages. Otherwise, every every time if I didn't take my chances, he will make me pay for it. And I remember we're three, we were in the third set, two all in the third. I'm playing good, like I'm actually, I actually believe I can win this match. And I get the one chance I get on his serve. I think I haven't broken him all match. Um, I get a fifteen forty, and I remember I'm like, okay, this is it. That's it. He's not playing well. He's not. He's really. He's he's kind of tired physically right now and and mentally a little bit and then i'm like i gotta take it and then he i think he aced me out wide and <laughs> aced me aced me <laughs> wide again or t and i was like okay and he's all of a sudden he's back to deuce and he holds and then he just needs to break me once and then and then all of a sudden he's got the advantage when i was playing better and he's just like managing his 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 service so, yeah. games and it's it's that's i think that's what really makes a difference especially with the with the big servers mm-hmm. yeah we have time? I don't know. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Like, so you said you get broken a lot. So when you get broken, sorry, I don't mean to I, I like... Get bro- I get broken, man. I'm, I'm like, I'm like, like hopping on the guy the whole episode. <laughs> Look, it looks bad, <laughs> but I don't mean anything by it. Like, do you feel like dejected or do you pretty much stay the same emotionally? Like, it's just like another game to you. Does it feel... Because you feel probably good about your chances breaking back yeah. as well. yeah. I'll be lying if I don't if I don't get a little upset. Obviously, when I when I break when when I when I get broken, because I know, I know I'm still especially indoors. Like it's not gonna be that easy for me to break. But yeah. I I I do see it in a way where I'm like, sometimes even if I'm if I already have a few breaks or if I have a break and I hold, like I still wanna I I see it as a way of like focusing. I'm not just gonna break once and then manage my mm-hmm. my service games right. So I'm gonna try to keep keep uh, trying to break in a way and then see if I can get that advantage just in case I get I get broken but actually for my for my height I don't know if you can agree with me Jody but I, th- I think I, I serve pretty yeah, well I think for my you height you serve well actually I think so yeah um, and so. for a player like me who likes to return back yeah. it's actually more awkward to return against you than okay Jody's gonna hit aces and stuff but, but most people don't like that Mo- I no I hate people, when the ball dips on me I, I was most gonna people say, hate that yeah, a lot hate of that. people have told me how they hate I'm not hitting aces but the ball's always low yeah. every I hate time that. they make yeah, contact it's so annoying like, I feel like for me for, for a while my slice wide like okay if I hit it in a great area it's gonna be an ace or yeah. it's gonna be unreturnable but if I don't hit it in the, in the right area it's just like right here and it's yeah. going like back, you can clean you know? it yeah, exactly. but yours just goes like low yeah. especially on like a faster court it's so annoying like yeah. I feel like if it's on clay or something where the ball will check up a little bit more I don't mind as much but like when you play on like let's say indoor surfaces and stuff man it's awkward it's like you don't know how to position sometimes and then yeah. you Bro. You feel like you have time, but it's like not easy to actually swing I on. I feel like a lot of that has to do with like, like w- what I'm realizing is when points get messy a lot, many people don't manage to reorganize the point. So like for you, you're just starting some points really messy. You yeah. know, you're not like hitting a bomb where they can just time a ball back. You're going to yeah. 
start a point where they have to maybe create off a return, which is not what guys ever want to do. Like yeah. Sometimes you're going to slap one, but like most of the time guys don't try to create pace off a return. They use like, the service From what I've been seeing a lot of the time, like when points get messy, the really, really good players reorganize it back really well. Whether that's like resetting the point back to neutral or now they're in a defensive position, they go defense or instead of like just going for it or something. But like to me, you're just starting the point messy and then yeah. it's just pain, bro. Like, bro you sound like you terrible. take notes or something, like you have yeah. a journal or something. That was good observation. <clears throat> I've I've been at the higher levels recently, you know. <laughs> and, you know and, actually, and you go and you have a podcast as well, so yeah. you're good at speaking. Account, apparently it's um Ben Rothenberg wrote an article today about uh-huh. Charlottesville mm-hmm. last week where I was at and he described it as like the middle tiers of professional tennis, which I guess it is, but like for me, I've not played challenges all year. So, like, to me, it's even more clear. Because I guess at Futures, there's a lot of messy points. Like, yeah, shit no, just happens, yeah. you know? And you get so much, <laughs> so many free points. Yeah, but then you go to the challenges and you see so much of, like, I guess what you describe of when you feel like you're playing well, like systems. You can see a lot of clear systems. Like, I was watching Ethan. This guy plays like this. Yeah. This guy plays yeah, like that. Yeah, like I was watching <laughs> Ethan and I, like, I was sitting in his coach's, in his box. Like, well, not, like, the coaching chair next to his coach. Mm-hmm. And I saw, like, he went first game, like, bomb like bomb again and then the third one or something fourth one he went kick like heavy kick on the first one so i asked his coach and i was like yeah like was that like what was the reason for that you know and he said just guys are too good at this level to just see the same thing all the time because they'll just adjust and sit on a certain serve where you have to just keep changing shit and making them do different things and like again i, I just believe that it has a lot to do organization like also, the, the really well organized players are the ones that do really well mm-hmm. yeah i agree with you and you know what i'm what i'm what i've been realizing late as of late as well is like at the challenger level and all the way up to the guys who make it i think they know very well the, and they understand very well their strengths and they yeah. they know what they do well and their limits too they yeah. know what they can't do they know do. what they yeah. can do <laughs> yeah. exactly. so they don't, they don't even mess with that yeah. so they they get so good at at using their strengths that they, they're like, okay, if I can't hit a back end, then I'm just going to slice. But I know I have a huge forehand. I'm going to maximize that. I'm, I'm going to maximize my serve. Yeah. I feel like sometimes right now where we're going through the futures and trying to get that to that level, like for me, I sometimes I'm starting to understand a little bit uh, more of my game now. But sometimes I felt like maybe I sometimes there were, there were times where I could just grind or like try to be more aggressive at times. No, I, I feel like now it's about who knows their strengths and, yeah. and you need to like and use them at, at their max. I think it opens your eyes too to see the other people. Like now I look at the game a little bit different. Like I can see, like when I'm watching the points, I can see like this guy is only doing this one thing with his backhand. He, he's not going to hit, he's not going to change backhand and go in line. He's going to go across every single time yeah. or he's going to slice line. So you have to hit up and then he has a forehand. Like yeah. it's just so clear yeah. to me. Like now, like the better players at least, I would say it's crystal clear. Like and our coach Becky says it's also important. He says that the best players also they know how to link their weakness back to their strength. So I don't know. If you don't like your backhand, maybe they have a way they put the slice a little short over here so they have time to get to the forehand. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. whatever it is, they know how to get from the thing they don't they don't like back to what they do like more often than not. So I yeah. think yeah. I good, would say good on the adjusting thing that you just said, like so I played the same team back to back weeks, yeah. and I felt like yeah. I put in a better performance the first week, and maybe part of that had to do with like, you know, not much expectation because yeah. in the practice sets, me and me and Harvey were kind of getting beat up on a little bit. We only won the very last set we played is the only one we won. We played like five or six sets in, in a few days, but then the second week, like I said, I felt like I didn't play as well, and then just by chance after the match, I end up sitting with the guy that I played against, Hans, yeah. and he was telling me. Like, yeah, like, we served you much tighter this this week, meaning, like, he served me close to my body. Yeah. He didn't want to give me space. Because yeah. in the first match, I returned a joke. Like, <laughs> returned a literal joke. Bro. I missed one return the whole first Like, really? rebel. Yeah. Like, the rebel. Bro, I was hitting re- backhand up. returns, winners. Like, I was doing shit that I was, like, looking at my hands, like, what is going on? <laughs> who, who am I? But, um, <laughs> but I guess the point I'm making is that, like you said about the adjustments. Like, they knew they played me the week before. Same yeah. as I made adjustments to, to them. Like, yeah. I, I thought that maybe I had the line open on return turns a little bit more. They teased me. They like showed me the line yeah. a little bit and then they covered it. Yeah. And now they're hitting drop ball. It's like boom, right over the net. Five, six times. And then I didn't adjust back. Like I should have been like, oh shit, they're doing that. Stay disciplined and go across. Yeah. You know, but I was like forcing it line and I felt like I was just being outplayed. Yeah. You know, and I guess part of it has to do with like they play that all the time and they see that shit all the time. Yeah. And they yeah, they were just much better at managing. You know, and that shows that why they're at that level. Because I don't know if you compare like 
shot for shot, go down the line. I don't know how far I am from them, yeah. but then obviously they were able to get through all of the big moments yeah. better than I yeah. than I did. And then that's probably the same for all the singles guys and all the rest of the guys that I love. There's so much information that they know about each other, they can just adjust yeah. for the next one, you know? How much time we got? We got <clears throat> time for a game. That's oh, by the way, um, <clears throat> for Daniel, Brian, Zach, Adam, JT, Sebastian, and Charlie, I'm sorry. We will get your questions in the next episode. We'll, we'll, they were all planned for today, but Aguilar talks too much. So. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just get into a game. By the way, you like the jersey? Let's do this. Um, that's a 14th <laughs> in the table jersey right there. This is the this is the jersey of a team that's gonna win on Sunday against Chelsea. Oh, should we should we do to... it right now? Should we put a bet on it? What do you want? What do you what do you want? My my team's playing his. The loser has to get on their story uh-huh. and do jumping jacks. I'm not doing saying that. I'm a star. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I'll do it. I'll show you guys. I'm a star on their story. Hold on. How many jumping and jacks? And say that the other team is better than their team. So you just be like, I just want to start by saying Chelsea is better than Man United. Better. Chelsea is Man United's daddy. Yes. I'm not saying daddy. Probably. Daddy. I'm daddy. not saying <laughs> that. Daddy. All right, we just shook up. And then five I'm a stars. Okay. Well, daddy and five I'm a stars. Yeah. Right. That's crazy. Hey, this episode comes out tomorrow, so. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So you know, you know how the game goes? Yeah, I, I think. Yeah. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see. You want to rip the rules quick? Just... Yeah, 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 yeah rules, We have it. some new subs. Welcome ah, to the sorry, channel, sorry, sorry, way. sorry. Okay, so on this channel, we play a game at the end of the episodes. I'm going to give you... F- it's going to be first to three correct answers. Okay. I'm asking the question. Shout the answer out. Yes, sir. If you answer it and you're incorrect, yeah. he has a chance to rebut it. And then you guys can try one more time the same question. Okay, we okay. both get it wrong again. We want the next question. I like first, it. To, first to three correct, and we'll have a winner. Yes? Come on. Yes, sir. Let's do this. Number one. Which country does... Shevchenko play for Ukraine. Oh, no. we're talking tennis. <laughs> Shevchenko. We're talking tennis. Tennis. Okay. <laughs> 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 Shevchenko. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know who you're talking about. Zinchenko. No, there's a uh, Shevchenko. They definitely are in the. <laughs> but. I'm gonna guess Kazakhstan. Well done. That's so lucky. Man. That's one for the ball. One playing, of the Reds. He was playing for Russia. He's Russian and he and he got the money probably. Oh, to go I to heard. Kazakhstan. I heard crazy money from Kazakhstan for Bublik and all these guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious, serious stuff. The Reds. Yeah. One zero. Serious stuff. One zero. One zero to the home team. Number two. Which country has the most players in the top 100 men singles? U.S. No. That was was that a bad guess? No, good guess. They're second. Currently. Right now, like today. Argentina. No, no, that's a bad one. That's bad. <laughs> he likes he likes Argentina so much. This guy. <laughs> France. Yo, this is an easy game. Easy game. Two zero. Easy Yo, this game. man has won like twice on this channel, bro. <laughs> 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 All right, all right, all right. Do I ever get to start? What do you mean? Your shout out. Your shout out the answers, bro. Oh. Yeah, I didn't even get that rules right. <laughs> Number three. Yo, what? It's not like it's he ruins and then we just go. Oh, then what? I said Ukraine the first time and he said no. Yeah, you you were wrong. If you get it wrong, then oh, I gotta okay, guess, okay, you know? Okay, I got it. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. What is the capital of oh. Argentina? Buenos Aires. Two one. I'm the amount of preseason as I've soon done as the man went geography, I said, shit. <laughs> it's gonna Please, get worse. I need more geography. <laughs> no, 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 no. Come on, let's We're playing up to three? Yeah, First yeah, to three. Two so one. it's two one. Two Fight one back. Good. Come on, come on. 23 plus 18. 41. <laughs> yes! 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 I didn't do five years of college for nothing. Yes! Man. That's two degrees, man. Let's go. Why do you do that, bro? All right. And the tiebreaker, the tiebreaker. First of all, we had feedback. We had feedback on Instagram that said no more geography. That was one man. That was one man. Everybody else laughed when you got the 14 times three wrong. And you said 72. Remember that? (laughs) You remember that? You you made a clip for it, actually. Can we just go to the next question and don't make it be no damn man? No, no, no. This is a tennis question. Which city 
is to host the Davis Cup Finals this year. Malaga. Malaga, let's go! Let's go! Yeah. <laughs> well, oh. well, we hope you enjoyed the episode. <laughs> Can we talk about how lost he just he was two zero up? How quick he lost this you man! You don't know this man just <laughs> you know, fucking yeah. whatever. Bro. He heard general knowledge and he just broke whatever, down. Bro. I'm sweating math, and shit. math and geography. I'm sweating and shit. This is the worst, bro. Charlie, thanks for coming. Man. Thanks, thanks for thanks, coming. Guys. I look forward to seeing your Instagram oh, on who, Sunday. Who's who's pressure, who's bro. the daddy? <laughs> I can't wait to see you. No, no, no. We're gonna see you on Sunday. We'll see you on Sunday. All right. Of the Reds. In the case? Red or blue? In the case of the Reds. Blue is the answer. Um, Yeah, thanks for watching, everybody. Nah, See you in the next episode. Fun episode, man. Thank you, guys.